Welcome to the Prelude in Computer Science series, video number 14 on language translation and other statements in high-level languages. Uh, we're going to write a little program in BASIC, uh, language called BASIC, uh, this time around that will help illustrate some of the ideas that we're talking about. Recall that there are three kinds of translators. There's a compiler that translates everything from uh, your higher-level language uh, program into machine code at one time. And then, uh, ex and then you execute it later. And in an interpreter, on the other hand, you translate and execute one line at a time. Translate, execute, translate, execute. And a hybrid translates everything to what are called bytecodes, which are then interpreted uh, one bytecode at a time. So we have this uh, single statement, in this case an assignment statement, y equal 3 plus 2. And that gets translated via a thing called a compiler into a sequence of uh, ones and zeros. There are other kinds of uh, statements in, la in uh, high-level languages other than uh, assignment statements. There are statements that allow you to do input from the keyboard or from other devices. There are statements that allow you to output things to the screen or other devices. And there are such things as calls to different uh, functions. So we're going to write a very simple program in a high-level language called BASIC. BASIC stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. And this program is just going to enter in values for two, it's going to allow the user of the program to enter in two values for different variables. Uh, in, of one variable called A and another one, variable called B. It's going to add those results together and then it's going to print uh, uh, the value to the screen. And we're going to follow this through step by step. Uh, and uh, to make sure that we understand the, the pieces. This is a very, very simple example. We're going to end up doing much more complicated examples than this, but this will get us started. So the first thing the computer does is it reads that first line there, print, enter a value for A, and it interprets that as an instruction and executes the instruction. And we see on the computer screen below there uh, what it actually types on the screen. It just types the sentence. Uh, enter a value for A. The thing that was inside the quotes, it just prints that to the screen. Next, the interpreter uh, reads the instruction input A. And uh, what that instruction does is it just prints a question mark on the screen and waits for the user to type something. It just waits. And whatever the user then type, uh, types in a number and then hit, hits enter, and then once the user hits enter, it takes that number and puts that into the variable uh, that's specified. In this case, the variable that we specified is called A. So we're still executing the input A instruction. The user, who is typing in red here, in, in a real computer, or in a real program, there, there wouldn't be any difference in the color probably, but uh, we're, I'm using this in red so that you can tell the difference. So the, it waits for the user to type 17 and then once the user hit enter, hit, hit, hits enter, it takes that value, stores it into the variable called A, and then ex goes on to execute the next statement. So now the computer reads in the next line, which says print enter a value for B. The print is the actual command, and the enter a value for B inside of the quotes is uh, the thing that's going to be printed. Now, You'll notice that when it's when it print when the computer actually executes the instruction, it doesn't include the quotes on the um, the thing that it prints. It just says enter a value for B without the quotes. Um, this is called a string literal. The the bit between the quotes is called a string literal, and uh, that means uh, take whatever is in the quotes exactly the way it is. That's what the quotes mean. Now the computer goes to the input B instruction and tries to execute that. And all that does is, once again, it prints a question mark to the screen and then waits for the user. It doesn't go on to execute the next uh, statement yet. It just stays right there and it waits for the user to type in another number and then hit enter. And once the user hits that number, it assigns that number to the variable. So now we see that the user has typed in 24 and hit enter. So that is the end of the input B instruction. It now takes, reads in the 24 after he hits enter, reads in the 24, then saves 24 to a variable someplace called B. Then the uh, computer executes the next instruction, y is equal to a plus b, then gets the value for a, which was 
17, it was stored as 17. Then it gets the value for B, which was 24, and it adds those two numbers together, and it stores that in a variable called Y. So Y now contains the number 41 after this instruction is completed executing. Now it executes the last instruction, print y equal semicolon y. Um, in this case, it printed the y equal exactly as it was between the quotes. It just printed that exactly as it was between the quotes. Uh, it, it, in other words, it printed it out literally. And then the semicolon is just a separator between that string and the variable. When it comes to a variable, since the variable is not between quotes, since y is not between quotes, it says, oh, don't print out y uh, uh, as a letter. Print out the y, evaluate it instead. Because it's not in the quotes, it then evaluates it, and it turns that into, 20, into 41. So uh, that's what happens on that final statement there. So that's the uh, end of our first program. Uh, it's a very simple program. It's just to illustrate the basic ideas uh, for you. Uh, I, I, I've tried to keep it as simple as I could. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have questions, I, sus I, I think it's a good idea if you talk amongst yourselves uh, and uh, email questions to me, it's, uh, that's fine. Uh, and uh, well, good luck, and we'll talk some more about programming uh, a little bit more later. Thank you.